I don't think you should underestimate the power of seeing yourself on screen from a really, really early age. I hope that for lots of, you know, young brown girls, this will be a symbol that you do matter and you are important and you can go after what you want. One day, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this to you right now. I watched it, finished it, and then immediately was like, I need to watch this all over again. And I cannot remember the last time I watched a TV show and I felt like that. And in case anyone doesn't know what One Day is about, it's a show that follows two friends, in inverted commas, Dexter and M, on One Day every year from the 80s right up to the noughties. And it's based on the best selling book by David Nichols. Were you obsessed with the book before this project came along? Oh my God, big time, big time. I like read it when I was like 13, 14, so like when it came out. Um, and it's just like absolutely one of my favorite books in the whole world. Like it's just always been, I feel like it's always been in my life. I low-key kind of feel like I've been manifesting this role for like 10 years and now it came my way. Um, it happened <laughs> against all odds. Um, so it is, it is madness. Where were you at in your life when this role first came along, when you first got that call to be like, oh, there's this role coming out in one day. Do you fancy going up for the audition? Where were you at in your life when this came along? A show I had done called This Is Gonna Hurt had just come out and everything was a bit mad because it was sort of like my first big sort of leading role. I remember I was like, I was having a really, really like manic day and I was sat on the sofa and an email came through and it was like, Emma, one day self tape. And I opened the email and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, I'm not doing that. And I turned it down. I turned it down like three times, the tape. No. Yeah, over like a course of like quite a long period of time, I turned it down. So you played hard to get. I played really hard to get. <laughs> it's sort of like my thing. Being avoidant is my attachment style and it works, everyone. Um, this is hard <laughs> proof that it works in life, in the work and in love. People always ask me why I turned it down. I think it was a mixture of reasons. Like, I think on the one hand, like, I was so overwhelmed because the show I'd just been had just come out, like it was being received really well. And I just sort of wanted everything to go away. And I was feeling a bit like in it. And then on the other hand, I was like, I love this book. I love this story. I love this character so much. I just didn't see myself playing her. I just couldn't see it. And then one day I, this is, this, this, is not hyperbole when I tell the story. I literally was asleep one night and in the middle of the night, I woke up and I was like, I've made a terrible mistake. And the next day I called my agent. I was like, is it too late to tape? I'm, what the fuck am I doing? And so I learned a Yorkshire accent in two days and sent it off. <laughs> and the rest is as they say, history. How did you learn a Yorkshire accent in the grand total of two days? I simply did not. I did not learn the accent. It was bad. If you if you hear my accent in my tape or in my first auditions, like, it was really, really bad. Um, it was not a good northern accent in any way, shape or form. But once I got the role, um, I then started working with a dialect coach and we got it to where it is in the series. But I, I, I could not do a very good one. The on-screen relationship you've created with Leah Woodall is exceptional it's the chemistry you both have on screen is so amazing when did leo first come into your life in this process and when you did that first chemistry read were you just like this is it i can see it now i can see this relationship coming together on screen what thing is my chemistry reads like the only thing that's being tested is chemistry. At that point, I think anyone who sort of called back to that round could play the part. And it just comes down to sort of a connection between two actors. And you have no control over that. You have no control over that. It's also really hard to judge when you're in that position. I'd only done one other chemistry read before with Ben Wishaw for This Is Gonna Hurt. But I remember like with Leo, like he was so open and warm just immediately and like, it felt really like easy, like the, the scenes felt really playful. Every scene just came so easily. We very rarely grappled with anything. There were never any moments where it felt stilted or like things weren't like, you know, being brought to life. Like it always just like happened. We always like mm. would have a couple runs of it and it would just like flow and we would feed off each other really, really well. That was really half the battle because I think if that had been cast wrong, like it would have been so much harder. Like you just can't fake that stuff. And you can tell when you watch it that you must have had such strong trust behind the scenes to make that happen because 
it was it's your first leading role it's his first yeah. leading role as well that's a big undertaking on such a massive show with such a massive book as well that it's based on which people have such a strong relationship with how did you lean on each other through the process of filming i think we were both going through a very very similar thing i think we both felt really similarly about the undertaking i mean i don't want to speak for him but i just remember in terms of sort of especially at the beginning of of the shoot like it was quite overwhelming and it was a massive responsibility not only like the size of the roles and the size of the project but also because the book and the characters are so beloved and we and we definitely felt that we were both really open with when we were struggling when we didn't feel like things were right I remember just like I'm, 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 maybe I was more vocal about it than him, but I would come out of every scene just being like, oh, fucking shit, I should fucking quit right now. I hate myself. Um, and like, he was just, you know, he was always, you know, very supportive to me in that. And, you know, I hope vice versa. Straight away, we were just sort of like, you know, no one really knows what the other person is going through apart from the other person. So that was really, really clear from the off. But um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was good to have, someone like that to lean on because as an actor you you might not always have that one of the things that really got me about the show that one of the themes that really stuck with me was this idea that emma's trying to figure it out trying to figure out what Mm -hmm. her path is in life and that is something we all go through if we're either figuring ourselves out or figuring out what we want to do what has navigating your path looked like for you it feels like a long winding process. It, I think in, in reality, it hasn't actually been that long. I've, you know, had my fair share of luck, luck in the process. But I think that's why Emma's so relatable because, you know, she doesn't have anything handed to her on a silver platter. Like, she really has to graft to find out who she is, what she wants. And that's something that I, I definitely really relate to. I come from a comedy background and I have, I'm doing, you know, writing and performing live comedy since I was 18. And, you know, I've always had an interest in acting, but I just never really, like, thought it would happen in the way that it has because I don't see people like myself on TV, so I just kind of thought it was an impossible pipe dream. And so it was, like, several years of just, like, grafting, you know? I would work a day job in the day and then um, gig at night, and then over the weekend I'd gig and I'd write all day and or I'd, like find short films to be in so I would have you know experience on camera and I don't know where I got the sheer amount of energy from like I would wake up at like six or seven go to work until like five I'd go like grab like a Greg sausage roll and then I'd go to a gig and I'd come home at like 11 p.m midnight and then I usually do it all again the next day and then for a long time things weren't happening and it was quite like disillusioning and disappointing but then once I you know got an agent and I got my first TV job, things sort of started to pick up and then luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And I think that's definitely true in my, in my case. Oh my God, I believe in that so much. That, that, yeah. that saying lives rent free in my brain all the time. Yeah. And it also goes to show that a Greg sausage roll is the fuel of champions, clearly. Vegan sausage roll. Yeah. Oh, it's the perfect God, dinner because it, just... it doesn't, it doesn't bloat you, but it like satisfies that that salty, that salty something that you want. You said earlier that you didn't see yourself on screen. Mm. And what is so amazing about this role with you playing Emma, it is the South Asian female representation we've long needed on our screen. When do you think you would have needed this representation the most when you were growing up? ASAP as possible would have been, would have been nice, like... I don't think you should underestimate the power of seeing yourself on screen from a really, really early age. It doesn't only feed into the, into sort of like your ambitions, but it also feeds into like what you think about how you look and, you know, how valued you are in society. And especially as a young woman, like it feeds into like how beautiful you feel or like, um, how the value you place on yourself in terms of like, do people fall in love with someone who looks like me? I think, so there's so much, you know, insidious messaging that comes with your face or people not people you, who look like you not being sort of front and centre that um, I think people don't realise. I hope now, you know, that's, you know, changing, not as fast as I think I would like, but 
it I hope that for lots of you know young brown girls this will be you know a symbol that you know you do deserve to be loved and you do matter and you are important and you can go after what you want and you don't have to be just one thing have you gone on a real journey to feel comfortable in your own skin in that sense oh my god yeah I'm, I'm still going on it I have like real days where I just look in the mirror and I think what is what am I looking at what is that I, I really struggled with sort of you know feeling comfortable with my own skin at school that was really like tough never particularly felt attractive or beautiful I still really don't um I wouldn't say that's like a characteristic of me Amber Kerr I've always you know I've always felt like I've got to be like the funniest, smartest, hardest person, hardest working person in the room because, you know, my looks aren't going to get me anywhere, which is, you know, sort of a double bind in this industry when, you know, your looks are to an extent quite important. Yeah, it's been a real, real journey. But I'd say like, especially I went through a lot of evolution in my early 20s. Especially do through doing comedy, I, I found who it is that I was. I found out what my voice was. That gave me a lot of confidence and it gave me a lot of um, self-belief. Well, what's kind of so special about that is, is that Emma is just presented on our screens and she's just allowed to be and her race is never actually brought yeah. into it at all. Yeah. Was that a really refreshing thing to be able to lean into? Yeah, it's really liberating to just be able to play Emma and like, not once is her race a factor or an issue or... I mean, it's not something we've completely ignored by any sense. Like, we created a backstory for, you know, my version of Emma and what her family might have looked like and, you know, where she might have grown up. That just helped us in the sort of creation and it's sort of embedded into the context of the character, but it's never immediately obvious. And I think that's... Yeah, I'd like to see more of that because I feel like that's definitely more grounded and authentic. And you are so authentic with what you bring to the screen. And so many people first fell in love with you watching This Is Going To Her. And it's such a poignant and powerful portrayal of mental health, I think. It's making me feel emotional even just thinking about it Um, because it was so, it was such an amazing performance. And it is another tough watch, just like One Day is, towards the end as well. How do you personally get through playing and working with tough storylines? And do they affect you? Do you mean dying all the time? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just constantly dying in everything that I do. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to die. When you're playing and exploring a role like the one you had in This Is Going To Hurt, where there is a big exploration of mental health. How is that, and, and, you know, working on it in such a deep way, how has that informed your own relationship with your own mental health? And what's that journey look like for you? I'm someone who is incredibly anxious and um, I, you know, have struggled with depression in the past. And there are a lot of Shruti's experiences in particular, which I definitely related to there's something that she goes through called anhedonia which is sort of a numbing it's you it's a numbing to pleasure it's a numbing to joy um it's a numbing to everything that once made you feel alive in any way big or small that was something that I definitely experienced you know like I remember like 2019 like I just don't remember most of that year because I was just so I felt so depressed and I was so numb to the outside world. Like everything just in my memory feels like a bit of a blur. Um, and I remember when I was playing Shruti, I sort of like confronted that for like the first time. I know what it feels like to go through a day where just nothing is sparking joy and you just feel really hopeless and you just feel a bit futile for the future. All you're living in is sort of like self-doubt and self-criticism and it's like a really lonely place to be and you're living in shame. To say you went through that experience where you kind of lost joy in life and you're now sat here today, slightly on the other side of that and in this amazing zone mm. in your career, how proud do you feel of yourself knowing that you've got to this point? Yeah, when I look back now, I'm 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 so proud and I don't get me wrong, I'm not, 
naive to like I've also had you know a lot of luck as well but I'm so glad that like especially you know for my younger self of like putting in the graft and putting in the work and doing all that stuff which I at this age have no I have I don't have the energy for it but you know I'm I'm really thankful and grateful to my younger self and I just hope I can just keep following my gut and doing things that feel important and and truthful to me.